name's Kimball Smythe, but you don't need to know about me yet. In fact, I wasn't even there that hot afternoon 30 years ago in a Texas town on the backside of nowhere. Still, I came to know a few pertinent bits and pieces about the beginning and about this woman who had dominated and changed so many lives. Her name was Callie Lord then, and she was young, and somebody, as they used to say, had done her wrong, quite wrong. The funny thing is, in the best tradition of melodramatic literature, the tale of one day in right here, where it all started. Oh, oh, oh my baby, oh, my. It's going to be just fine. Callie never even got to hold her baby. It was a boy. And the day after he was born, a lawyer out of Amarillo drove into town to collect the merchandise. Now listen carefully, Miss Lord. This first paper is called the Act of Relinquishment. I, Callie Martha Lord, do hereby relinquish and surrender said below described white male Caucasian infant for permanent adoption. I've been thinking about this, Mr. Lawrence. I've been thinking a whole lot, and I've changed my mind. I'm afraid that's quite impossible, Miss Lord. My clients have already paid out $245 in prenatal care. You back out now, Callie, and they're going to have to file on you for fraud. Criminal fraud. That's felony. I don't want to cause anybody any trouble. I said, that baby's my flesh. He's my son. I'll pay you back all the money. It's too late now. You're a Christian girl, aren't you, Callie? Hmm? Never been in trouble before. Well, then you'd probably get a 10-year suspended sentence. Likely as not, they put that baby in an orphan home. If I sign it, could I just hold my baby for one minute? That wouldn't be right. It'd just be too hard after that. <laughs> well, are they good people? Fine. Christian family. Nurse, please witness that I am formally handing to Callie Martha Lord the cashier's check from the Republic Loan Star <laughs> National Bank, Dallas, Texas, in a sum of $2,000 for services rendered. <laughs> Callie never told anybody the name of her baby's father. She buried the past the day she left Chillicothe. With an ache in her heart and $2,000 in her pocket, she bought a bus ticket to Dallas. The last thing she did was call her mama, whose blessing was goodbye and good riddance.
wait and I call the sheriff. You find yourself out on the sidewalk. I expect Christian behavior in my home. No profanity, no noise, no electric hair curling. Lights out at 10, don't waste hot water. And no men, I repeat, no men allowed upstairs ever. You hear me? Yeah, the old bat gave you the black hole of Calcutta. Listen, why don't you come over to my place? I got a red silk pillow I could loan you. Lord knows it'd be a start. Come on. Okay. Oh, I didn't get your name. Callie Lord. Nice to know you, Callie Lord. I'm Jeannie Everly. No cooking. No electric hair curling. Lights out at 10. Don't waste hot water, which I did. And no men. Repeat, no men allowed upstairs. That. What does that old bat know about me? And she ain't had one since the Indian. Oh, my feet on a waitress are worse than a flat chest on a stripper. My dogs are killing me. Hey, you got a job? No, but I sure could use one. Listen, of course, this is just between you and me, okay? Because I don't know for sure, but there may be a job opening up down at the cafe where I work. There's this old gal named Ruthie. Hmm. She thinks she's fixing to quit, found a husband. Lord knows she's ugly. I don't know. She ever managed matrimony. Thanks, but uh, I think I'll probably just look around a little bit more. Well, excuse me. Didn't mean to twist your arm or anything, hon. No, there's nothing wrong with being a waitress. It's just that I kind of had a little something more in mind, that's all. Sure. Come on, sit. It's hot now. As soon as my husband gets back from Korea, we're going to move out to a farm. You married? Well, yeah, twice. Well, uh, more like one and a half, actually. First didn't last out the weekend. We were both a fast 15 at the time. Oh, this too. Come here, I want to show you your new step. Oh, you probably know it anyway. Come on, count. Two. One, two, three. Don't they dance where you come from? Not really. <laughs> Well, who be do? Oh, come on, you'll see. It's not going to be so bad. Now, listen, if anybody has busy hands, you just say no. Now, keep it up. You come tell Aunt Jeannie, and she'll pour hot coffee down there in red necks. <laughs> That's a safe one to start with. He comes in here every morning. He never says a word to you. He doesn't take anything but coffee, but he leaves a quarter tip. I think his name's Mr. Bordeaux. Works for the newspaper or something. Good luck. Good morning, Mr. Bordeaux. Good morning. How'd you make out? I got about six dollars, I think. Six bucks? That is semi-sensational. Hey, you want to go with the Silver Spur tonight and celebrate? Let me man there once said he's a real live lion tamer. Well, I don't think so. Oh, I kind of got plans already, thanks. Sure. Bye. Too. He's already walking. I bet he's adorable. I don't believe this. It seems like you could have told me before 615. Ain't you got your own? Oh, I just got the curse. You don't make a reservation. Well, damn. Damn. There's trash, and then there's trash. Another hot night between the pages, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ain't gonna find a husband in there? I ain't looking for one. <laughs> what are you looking for? I don't know. But maybe I could be a better person, learn a few things. Yeah, I'm prescribed personally a little fun. Hey. 
Have I ever asked you a favor before, ever? No. Well, get ready, because here's the first. Now, I want you to get that widely sought after behind the yours right out of that bed and come have a double date with me. Oh, now listen, I got two genuine old men. They're going to take us to a real fancy restaurant with real expensive, nice wine, soft music, candlelight, la dee da hoop dee doo Come on. Come on. Thanks, I don't think so. Well, what's the matter with you, huh? Don't you like men? Well, I don't dislike them. Well, you haven't had three dates in the last year. Jenny, I don't ever know what to say to a guy. Best words, no. Well, of course, you could just... <laughs> you could just sort of smile a lot and make him think you're mysterious. I'd rather read. You won't do it for yourself, would you do it for me? Jenny, please. Oh, pretty please. All right. All right. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes in the oil business, you just hit a dry hole. Oh, that's for sure. God, such a crazy. Did you see that over there? <laughs> hey, look, it's for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, can we go over to your room? I'd like to... I don't want to be alone. one of these things before. Well, open it. I can't. You read it to me. Please. Read it. We regret to inform you that your husband, Corporal William P. Everly, was killed in action in heavy fighting at the 38th parallel. President Truman and the nation extend their deepest sympathies. Carl Tipper, U.S. Department of Defense. Jeannie, I'm so sorry. You know the funny thing? I remember what Billy looked like. I can't remember how he felt. We were only together a couple of weeks. It's like one of them war movies, you know. He promised me he'd only be gone a couple of months, and he said he was going to come back when we were going to buy. I do. It's shameful not to remember what your own husband felt like. Could I have... Could I borrow a clean name? Yeah. Maybe a glass of water. Who's finished? I'm for number three, that's all. Jeannie. Well, it's true. 
When I find him, he'll be climbing telephone poles or fixing washing machines or selling cars. He won't be any better or any worse than the rest. But There's one no... thing's for sure, he's our kind. There's no law that says you got to settle. Oh, sure there is. It's Jeannie's law. You get what's coming to you. I... You got a kid stashed away someplace? Kid, no. Well, no, you ain't pregnant. Well, of course I'm not. What are all them baby clothes doing in the drawer? Oh, it's for my nephew. I got me a little nephew, and he's just giving me some real cute little guys. Look, I don't want to be nosy. You want to talk about it? No, thank you. Now, look, Kelly, I know something's hurt you. Hey, tell Aunt Jeannie. Get my mind off that telegram. I'm not going to tell. Besides, you probably hate me anyway. Oh, I hate you. We're best friends. Warts and all, remember? There's nothing you could do to make me hate you. Nothing. It's just that I didn't know what to do. And I couldn't keep my baby, so I had to give him away. Ladies and counsel, pleaded race ipsa locator. En voir dire, the prosecution used three peremptory strikes. Yes, Callie. Uh, could you repeat that last part, please? They don't repeat testimony in a courtroom, Miss Lord. Yes, ma'am. Let the record show the deposition of Mr. Randall Bordeaux, Jr. was taken at 2 p.m. April 15, 1953. Present were Ralph Haynard, attorney for the plaintiff Samuel Rifkin, and Horace Jensen, counsel for Mr. Bordeaux. What is your name, miss? Callie Lord. Now, Callie Lord of the Jurgens Court Reporting Company. This deposition is in the matter of a civil libel suit brought against Mr. Randall Bordeaux. Membership committee, I just don't Good know. Good night. Good night. Oh, excuse me, miss. Oh, we'll see you later. Okay, thank you very much. I, uh, I didn't get a chance to thank you for staying so late up there through all that, uh, that nonsense. Oh, that's all right. No, I enjoyed it. You handled things quite beautifully, too, I think. Oh, thank you. Well, um, can I give you a lift? Or? No, I, I just thought I'd go find myself a real cup of coffee. I think it's time. Well, I could uh, use a cup of coffee myself. Black with two sugars, I think. Good Lord. Miss, Miss, Miss Lord. <laughs> I did not make the connection. <laughs> People said Callie set her cap that night for the most eligible bachelor in Dallas. Wrong. Just a man and a woman discovering a lot in common. It seems that love always happens when you're not out looking for it. Oh, I miss those old people. Don't you have any family here? No. Newspaper. Newspaper's my family. My mother, my, my wife, my child, my friend. And my enemy. Do you mind if I say... I think you're remarkable. 
Oh, you can say that as often as you like. <laughs> I would like to say, though, that uh, you handled yourself very well. You held your temper in that room today. I, I mean, I know I'm not supposed to take sides, but uh, that libel suit is as leaky as Grandma's milk bucket. And, I mean, if I was you, I'd turn right around and sue the eyes off those people. I may do that, Callie Lord. <sighs> Callie Lord, I like that name. The person it belongs to. Might I see that person again sometime? What a night it was. Social Dallas was out in force, bejeweled, bedecked, and hell-bent on scrutinizing the commoner who had married a prince. Can't say I blame Randall for wanting to show her off. Just sorry I didn't meet her first. Whatever. It seemed that... Ma'am, I gather you have the same tolerance for these tribal rights as I do. I just needed a little air, Mr. Uh... We haven't met yet. My name's Kimball Smythe. Now, I'm neither rich nor famous, but uh, fairly civilized anyway. I teach political science at SMU. That's nice, Mr. Smythe. I uh, guess I'd best be getting back to Randall now. You don't seem too anxious to go back inside. Tell me. Have these old crocodiles been snapping at you? No more than I expected. Been exactly the most popular marriage in Dallas this year. Mm -hmm. Well, you better come with me. I'll give you a little food for thought. Please observe right in front of us there, that painted gourd squash, the one with the cherry on top. Miss Cora Peabody. Now, uh, believe it or not, she was once the most celebrated hooker in East Texas. They say that on one memorable weekend in 1937, she entertained 53 customers, one of whom struck oil on Monday morning, gave her $50,000 in a wedding ring as tribute. Oh, and right through there, you might observe that rare species as Ludie England, arbiter of all that's rich and beauteous. Yes, and she makes me feel like I should use the servant's entrance. Listen, she's formerly known as Blanche Goober. Gooberman's. Yeah, yeah. Old Blanche ran a horse wire near Love Field. She tried to kill two lovers for which she escaped punishment by completing self-defense. Both men, I might add, got bullets in their back. Now, that was 30 years ago, which is an absolute miracle because she told me personally she's only 28. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. You <laughs> have made your point. Wait a minute, <laughs> Professor. How'd you get in here? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -huh. Over the back fence. I have to ease my way into these major events. This character tell you he's about my oldest friend? Because nope. anything he tells you, it's best to you know, disbelieve. I speak only the truth, just like everything's printed in your newspaper. <laughs> Congratulations, Randy. I think you got the gold, huh? Thank you. Have I told you lately how much I love you? Mm. How proud I am of you? Not since midnight. That was ten minutes ago. Oh. Mm. oh. You two kids are just adorable. <laughs> I've never <laughs> been to a better wedding party and I've had three. <laughs> Janie, where's number three, by the way? Oh, he ran off with some heifer. Oh. Why is it every man I marry has 15 cents in his pocket, eight outstanding Ooh. traffic tickets, and the charm of a brain of bull? I wish we'd met 10 years ago. I'd have qualified on all counts. Good Lord, Willie Chips. Where's the party? Where'd everybody go? Oh, you old <laughs> peach picker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ladies, I'd like to present this to former uh, Dallas Roughneck, who is now the, the proud owner of 255 gas and oil wells right outside of Weatherford. 
257. Got lucky this morning. <laughs> Is that real oil or snake oil? <laughs> well, hoopty do. <laughs> Do you want to go with this uh, three column art of I can maim you at Gettysburg? No, no. I think we should use something of a more local nature. You know, we still have. What, 12 staff photographers? Hi. Hey, darling. Why didn't you call? Gentlemen, y'all know my wife. Uh, oh, please be seated. May I speak to you? Uh, well, yeah. Um... It's kind of private. All right, no, no, Excuse me, boys. I'll be right back. Sure, this can't wait about an hour. We're on a deadline here. No, I can't wait one more minute. I just came from the doctor, and he told me I'm thoroughly pregnant. You what? I'm growing our baby. Are you sure? Yes. <gasps> Congratulations, boss. You want that on page one? <laughs> hey, ladies, where do you want this thing in here? Oh, out the barn. Oh, my God. Look, it's cute. Look, it's put right over there. Listen, now, I think it'd be cheaper if we bought a real one. <laughs> you get all over your number four and you give me a kiss. Oh, hold your passion for Just one minute. One minute. One. That's fine, dumpling. One thing for sure, that kid'll never be spoiled. Oh, no. Look here, look at here. Really, you shouldn't have. And I got him a Davy Crockett outfit on order. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, you want me to put these diapers in this drawer here? You okay, honey? Just a little gas pain. Oh, Dr. Melbourne says you're a lot better today. In fact, said two or three more weeks and you'll be good as new. He also said you're not eating. Got to start eating. Now, if you don't like the food here, I'll just call the Petroleum Club and have them send a tray over. Would you like that? Hmm? It's God's will. He's paying me back. Darling, wait a minute. I don't even want you to think like that. It's not anybody's will. Oh, but it is. He waited for no, just no, the right no, moment listen, to listen, punish me. Listen, listen to me a minute, okay? I got a great idea. As soon as the doctor says it's okay, why don't you and me just take a trip together alone? Did the doctor tell you I can't ever have a baby again, ever? I don't care. As long as we're together. Nothing's ever gonna grow inside me again. I should have told you this a long time ago. This isn't the first baby I ever lost. What do you mean? Was it a boy? Kendall, tell me. No, Callie, was Callie, he real for We promised we wouldn't ever talk about that. Oh. Mr. Huh? The first one was. He was a fine boy. He was beautiful. He was healthy. And uh, I just saw that. Like a basket of vegetables. Here's the money, and here's the baby. What are you talking about? <laughs> why, why did God wait so long? He waited so just now to punish me. People knew how sick Callie was. She stayed three months in the hospital, and at least twice the doctors feared she was dying of internal bleeding. But it was grief, shame. The day Randall brought her home, she was pale and lost. She didn't know he had a surprise waiting. 
He'd worked his tail off to keep Callie alive and sane. Randall turned Texas upside down, and this is what he wrought. I told you I wanted this room closed and locked forever. Just trust me, okay? Whose child is this? I think you know, don't you? How'd you find him? Wasn't well, easy. Well, go on, introduce yourself. Is it really him? Of course it is. Can't you tell? Well, I can't believe it. Yep. And you can believe this, too. They named him Randolph. The answer's to Randy. Randy? My name is Kelly. And I'm your mama. And I love you more than you'll ever know. Could I maybe have a little kiss? Just one little teeny tiny kiss right here. Please. Oh. I'm so sorry I left you. And I'll never do it again. Randy, listen to me. I promise you, I will never leave you again, ever. Because I love you. I love you so much. I got all the love in the world for you, baby. I really do. I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Fine. How you doing? Good. Mm. How was your flight? Long. We had to land in Memphis. How was the president? You know, he's very impressive. Did he mention anything about our Bay of Pigs editorial? I think the word uh, Judas came up a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Don't worry about it, though. I didn't tell him who came up with the line, fools rush in. <laughs> Listen, darling. I don't know uh, exactly how to say this. And I don't want to blow it out of proportion, but I think, I think Randy's too big to be sleeping in here now. Well, he couldn't sleep. Stomach hurt. He ate too much birthday cake. You do remember today was his birthday, don't you? 
want to get his little book, climb up in bed with Mama and read for a while. Is there anything wrong with that? Let's talk about it tomorrow. Why? What's there to talk about? This is what I think. Randy's not developing properly. His grades are terrible. I think you and he would benefit if we went ahead and sent him to that prep school up in Connecticut. I can't believe you still want to exile a 12-year-old child 2,000 miles away from home. What do you mean, exile? You know, there's just a slight possibility he might learn something up there. Randy is a bright boy. He has simply not been challenged properly, that's all. Never will be, as long as you keep protecting him. Oh, no, protecting my son is a maternal felony. All right, let me use another word, then, as long as you keep smothering him. I'll be the judge of that. What? I said I'll be the judge of that. Callie, you know, you're a wonderful mother. But he's my boy, too. He's not yours, he's mine. Who found him? Who bore him? You're the mother, I'm the father. Let's just leave it at that. You know, you keep whipping me. I won't take up golf. I don't I, I don't have to take this kind of abuse, you know. You played better in your life. What? You nearly got a game there. Christine oh. Love and blew it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Listen, you called Ted Sorensen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I suggested to him that the president just skip us on this trip. He can't. Jack's growls so long, so loud about oil and steel. He's got to come down here, show people there's no blood on his fangs. I hope he brings Jackie with him as a diversion. You heard what happened to Adlai Stevenson the other day, didn't you? Yeah. Some of our local patriots whacked him over the head with one of those uh, get out of the UN picket signs. Yeah. Number of nuts always bound to fall out of the tree in Dallas. How's Callie? She's good. Randy's her whole life. Damn, she's so smart. I wish she'd get interested in something else. Yeah, for a self-educated woman, she amazes me. Knows her politics. Listen, why don't you try to find her a job on the newspaper? Election year's coming up. That's terrific, except that the problem is it's a package deal. See, Callie and Son. Indeed, they were a package deal. A veritable corporation. Callie and Son. She is bound and determined that Randy had it in him to write like Hemingway. Callie crossed that narrow line between possession and obsession. She never even noticed the harder she squeezed, the more her son was slipping away from her. This is a bonus for the people who have waited out here. Yeah. Are you watching? Hands that boy can really draw a crowd, can't he? Conley, yeah. Now listen, darling, we've got to be at the trademark by 12.15 sharp. Well, we have to be seated before Jack and Jackie get there. Yeah. Well, listen, tell Randy he's going to get a chance to shake hands with the president. Okay? What? Darling, it doesn't make any difference what you wear. You're going to look great no matter what you put on. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll see you there, okay? I love you. Bye-bye. All right, we're set. Thank you. President, thank you very much. If I may be permitted to read a presidential lip movement, and, uh...
talk to Horace today. Not a lawsuit, my goodness. Now I decided to sell the paper. Why? Honey, the, the economy's picking up. It doesn't have anything to do with dollars and cents. Well, why then? The post dispatch has been in your family over a hundred years. Maybe it's just because. Life right now is so unsettled, I don't know. But I think when they saw Jack Kennedy here, he was so young and vital and... I haven't been able to shake that. Darling, I love you so much. And I love our son. I just think it's time for us to get off this treadmill and find some time for ourselves. Maybe raise a few head of cattle. And Randy loves the land. He's always loved the land. Well, that's very touching, darling. But uh, I understand your concern. But, but, but you and I have both devoted ourselves to Randy taking over the paper someday. Now, if you sell it, you're going to strip our son of his inheritance. Is that your plan? Plan? Can you plan anything in this day and age with all the lunatics running around the world? Darling, you'll get over this depression. I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise you won't make any decisions until you get over the pain of Kennedy's death. And after that, Randy and I'll back you in whatever you want. Okay? I'm here to see the city editor. Is he expecting you? Yes. I'm a little early. I'll just go on in. Sir, it's better to wait out here. I'll announce you. Yeah. Which one of you bastards wrote, wrote this? Who gave you the right to print lies about me? Huh? lost to the legions of lunatics with grievances and trigger fingers. Randall died before he hit the city room floor. We gave him a big funeral, bishops, eulogies, tears, the works. In the 60s, we were getting it down pat. Callie took his death a lot harder than I would have expected. I never realized how much she loved my best friend. I wondered if Randall knew. I hope he did. Samuel said you gotta eat, Mama. I miss him too, Mama. I know you do, darling. I know you do. What are we gonna do, Mama? Things gonna be all right. It's gonna be fine. I promise you that. I promise you that. Good morning. May I have a chair for my son, please? Though there are no words to describe our profound sense of loss and waste. Thank you. Please continue. Uh, as you know, Mr. Bordeaux turned down a recent offer to sell his newspaper. Yes, we shared all decisions. It uh, then became his intention to turn ownership of the Dallas 
post dispatch over to its employees. Uh, he was fairly well along in the formation of this plan when. Uh, Please go on. Well, perhaps Horace Jensen can better explain these these documents. Mrs. Mordeaux is uh, your late husband's personal counsel, and with all due respect, these documents represent the transfer of ownership from your late husband's estate to an employee committee. All vested employees of this newspaper will become owners. We propose to offer the generous sum of $11.75 per share. Excuse me. Excuse me. Gentlemen, I hope there has not been a misunderstanding. The Dallas Post-Dispatch was founded by my late husband's great-grandfather. It has been owned and edited by Bordeaux for four generations. And thus it will continue. My son will one day be the fifth. I want this run tomorrow, page one, all editions. It is an announcement that Mrs. Randall Bordeaux is accepting the editorship of the Dallas Post-Dispatch. And she is assuring our readership that this great newspaper's tradition and integrity will not only be continued, but infused with new vitality. Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I will be taking over my husband's desk, and at 7.15, I will expect to have the regular news meeting. Ms. Bordeaux, I... I know how grieved you are over Randall's tragic passing, but I cannot believe you'd go against his wishes. Mr. Donahue, I believe that since I am the widow of Randall Bordeaux and that since I slept next to him every night for the past 12 years, I am in a better position to express my husband's wishes than you. Now, if you find fault with the new editor of this paper, I feel certain that your resignation will be accepted. Any more questions? Here's what I mean. This lead goes on forever. It is endless. A speech by the president of the Chamber of Commerce is worth two graphs maximum. It is boring. Now, back here on page 27, I found a little tiny item. And it's a hell of a story about a farmer who shot his wife, he shot his wife's lover, and the horse that fellow rode in on. Now that, my friends, is page one. I want, no. Correction, I demand that every word in this paper be bright and interesting. Because if it bores you, Lord knows it's going to bore the people right to sleep, don't you think? To the surprise of just about everyone but me, Callie became one hell of a newspaper woman. She slapped new paint on the old lady and circulation went up 22% the first year. There's just two things in her life, the paper and Randy. She earned power and she used it, and in 1968, she's voted one of the 10 most admired women in America. But she went to bed alone. Hey, baby. Sorry I missed our dinner. Did Samuel fix your tray? Uh -huh. We put out two extra dishes tonight, and they sold out just like that. I've never seen anything like it. Well, I suspected you'd been smoking. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ain't your basic filter tip, Mama. You want to try some? I suggest you read page one of the night final. Judge Bricker just gave two boys 30 years in the state penitentiary for marijuana possession. Yeah, I read page one of the night final. Interesting social notes from all over. Did you have to read that bitty little item about Bobby Kennedy getting shot to death in L.A.? Do not be facetious with me. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it, Mama. I'm real pragmatic. I figure I got two choices. I can go get my butt blown off in Vietnam, or I can stop a bullet right here at home. Baby, you have plenty of... And have don't plenty call me baby! I'm 18 years old. You have plenty of options. Now, Kimball is fixing it up so you can go to the University of Texas. We have an excellent journalism department there. I haven't got the grades, Mama. You know it. Besides, what if I don't want to go? What if me and Pete decide to... Pete and I, please. Whatever. What if we decide to split? I don't know, maybe bum around Europe. Well, it's impossible. You, you, you go to college, or you get drafted. Mama, I don't know who I am. You are the heir to a great newspaper, that's who you are. And I have been working 18 hours a day trying to keep that paper going for you. Mama, 
Mama, please give me some room. I have never made a decision in my life. I'm worried about your attitude. It is rather poor. Yeah, but it's my own, Mama. At least let me have my own damn attitude. I want you to be happy. Mama, I'm not ambitious. I, I can't fulfill your dreams. And I want you to realize your potential, Randall. <sighs> Mama, you want to know the truth? I don't give a diddly squat. Randall. Oh, go fight the war, Mama. Go write some patriotic editorials about the need to protect San Francisco from Viet Cong invasion. It's enough. Go on, Mama, you go sell them papers. Come on, Mama, kick some butt. Yeah! I'm sorry, I know we're already late for dinner. There's a little girl outside from Chandler. Got a good she wants to do a real quick interview before we leave. I'm afraid my Vietnam editorial kicked up quite a dust storm. Congratulations. I'm surprised the White House hasn't called. They have. Twice. Well then, Mrs. Bordeaux, why did your newspaper make such an abrupt about face and come out against further U.S. involvement in Vietnam? My words speak for themselves. I did sign the editorial. You do have an 18-year-old son of draft age, Mrs. Bordeaux. Did that affect your decision? I don't think so. Randy is a fine young man, and he would willingly serve his country if needed. Thank you. This is Susan Moore talking to Callie Lord Bordeaux. Well, you handle that television girl pretty good. I thought she's kind of pushy. Well, she's ambitious. We all are. When's Randy leaving for Austin? Next week. And thank you again for all you did. You signed the check? A little chilly in here, don't you think? You know, somewhere between the salad and that drink, I lost you. I'm sorry. Well, anything wrong? No, I'm just a little worried about Randy. Hmm. Every mother in America is worried about a Randy. Looks like we've got new rules for the game of parenting. Well, I guess I ought to be going. I've got an 8 a.m. meeting with the ad salesman. In all of your reading, did you ever come across Freud's definition of maturity? No. Well, it's someone who works and loves productively. Well, what's wrong with 50%? <laughs> Thank you for dinner. What do I have to do? You know, I've tried my Tweedy intellectual number, my Southern gallant act, my devoted companion impression. Mm -hmm. That didn't work either. Kimball, please don't wait for me. Please. Why don't you just be honest with yourself, Callie? You're as lonely as I am. How many times do you wake up at night? I don't have time in my life for anyone else. You can't go to bed with the newspaper, Callie. Or Randy. That's beneath you. You're right, it is. So I'll just say it straight out. I love you. I've always loved you. I always will. Please don't waste your love on a woman who can't accept it. Are you all right? I came as soon as I could. How did this happen? I don't understand. He was fine last night. And, and then he got up this morning and he went down to have make coffee and, and, and listen to the livestock report like he always does. And then I came downstairs and he poured me a cup. And then 
he started to hand it to me, and, and his hand started sh shaking like this, and his body started shaking, and, and he dropped the cup out of his hand, and then he just looked at me, and he didn't say anything. He just looked at me with all this love in his eyes. I don't understand. What did the doctor say? He's not going to make it. His heart is wore out. Proposition for you, Mama. Oh, all right. I was thinking, now that I graduated, how'd it be if I moved on out here to the ranch, maybe around a few cattle? Is that why you lured me out here? Well, the answer's no. Why? Why not? I'm 21. Well, I'm gonna be running away from your responsibilities. Well, your responsibilities, Mama. You've been writing my script for me ever since I fell off my horse at my sixth birthday party right here at this ranch, remember? You with the paper, Randy. You don't need me to shine light on your life, Mama. You're a damn star. No. The answer is no. I got a compromise for you. What? A compromise in the best LBJ tradition. I'll give you one year out of my life. I'll work my butt off for the paper. But if I don't fit the glove, Come on back here. You're on. You're on. Nah. Hmm. back at the bar. Winter take off. I haven't been out in a half months. Well, you look wonderful. Oh, yeah, well, Mary Widow. Uh huh. Ain't what it's cracked up to be, kid. Two Mary Widows, thank you. All dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody new in your life? Shoot, no. Well, I was looking at the pool man with carnal interest the other day, but I don't think he has a grandmother fetish. I do admire your resilience, woman. Now, what? The way you bounce back. Oh, mm. <laughs> it's called bluff. Yeah. Well, it's a valuable tool. Don't talk dirty. <laughs> Will you stop it? <laughs> Listen, this is not exactly a mission of mercy. I didn't think so, Pinocchio. I got a proposition for you. Oh, God, I could use one. <laughs> I'm going to drop the syndicated love loan column down at the paper. They've been getting silly, and they're just asking for too much money. I'm not going to go for it. How would you like to take over the Broken Hearts Department? Me? I can't even speak the King's English, much less write it. Don't be silly. Jeannie, it doesn't matter. We no. have editors to fix your grammar. <laughs> what I want is your wit and your common sense. Oh. What kind of letters would I have to be answering? Divorce. Uh, Adultery, death, rotten kids, that sort of thing. Oh, that. I thought you meant serious problems. Okay. Yeah? I'll try. You're on. <laughs> Why not? I think it's great. Can't lose. <laughs> Scattered Boy Scouts all over soybeans. Yeah, right. Just, just leave it, kid, okay? Junior just wrote the world's worst obit. You got any new ideas? Oh. Getting that shopping center nonsense. Nobody can screw that up. Please, God, let this keep the little prince off our backs a while. Funny the way the right thing happens at the wrong time. That shopping center nonsense might have won the little prince both maturity and severance from his mama. He wrote an article that finally lived up to Callie's expectations, but this time he wasn't supposed to. I wonder if she really wanted him to succeed. Mama! You look like a Waco tornado. What happened? You know that place where Daddy and I used to go camping out near the old Elkins branch? All right, well, some outfit called North Tex intends to pave over the last beautiful place in this part of Texas. Now, there is inadequate financing. 
One of the partners has Vegas connections. And I think, I can't prove it, but I think that somebody down at City Hall got paid off to provide a permit. Now, I spent three weeks digging all this out and another two weeks writing the first and only story I have ever believed in, and I might just as well blow my nose with it. Somebody shot it down. Honey, sit down. Sit down. I, I read your article. It's excellent. Sit down. Really, Mama? You think so? I think it is first rate. Um, I'm very proud of you. But a newspaper has certain responsibilities, Randy. One of which is, is to promote the city's growth, to create new jobs, broaden the tax base. Well, what's your point, Mama? Can't our paper help keep one lousy place for your pizza parlors? I think we ought to explore this later. It's just a little too complex. Why? I'm capable of understanding something complex. Try me. Randy, I said later. Please. I take it you have no intention of running my story. Not for the time being. All right. I'm not going to work for your pissant paper. Goodbye, Mom. I said, we'll see, honey. We'll see. Happy New Year to you, too, Mama. No, no plans at all. Just gonna watch Cotton Bowl on two. All right. Yes, ma'am, has been a long time. Yes, ma'am. I've been hearing some wonderful things about your organization. The way you should. Judge Horn just granted us an injunction against North Tex. That story, you wouldn't run your paper, paid off. Well, you must be proud. That's okay. It's frustrating. How so? M-O-N-E-Y, lack thereof. Would you like a loan against your trust fund? No, ma'am. I thought I'd fly solo for a while. Right. How's your life? You, uh, have any new friends? Maybe a special girl? How's yours? How's Kimball's? I'm married to the paper, you know that. Besides, I can't exactly deny the mirror these days. Now, come on, Mama. I'd say you were a pretty dynamite-looking chick. To use the vernacular. Well, thank you. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. You too. Happy New Year. Randy, it's real good to see mother and son supping together the first day of the New Year. Thanks, so. Listen, have a little dinner. We have black-eyed peas for good luck. Ah, disgusting food. <laughs> then have a glass of champagne. No, thanks, but I'll have just a touch of brandy, Samuel. You know. Kimball, I'm glad you stopped by. I had the most delicious idea come into my mind. Aren't you trying to find someone to run for the unexpired portion of Homer Wiggins' legislative term? Uh, well, that certainly is a novel idea. Well, who are you all talking about? Oh, someone who might just break every president in Austin and actually speak for the people. Oh, now be serious. I'm only 22. I don't even have a law degree. Well, it's old enough. We got too many self-serving lawyers down there anyway. But I, uh, I know less about politics than I do about grand opera. Same thing. Sing loud. Everybody else goes to sleep anyway. Besides, it's a safe seat. Well, no, wait, wait a minute. This is, this is crazy. I mean, I... Well, wouldn't it seem just a little hypocritical? Me running in a silk stocking district? Darling, I don't care what your lifestyle is now. Your name is still Bordeaux. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's what you do when you get to state capital. But, Mama, I'd be wasting my time. The lobbyists have Austin under lock and key. Don't you have the courage to try? Where can you best serve your beliefs? In the storefront office or right in that chamber where those laws are made? I'd vote for you. Well, that's one vote. 
I do believe this is where the ladies leave and the gentlemen solve the problems of the world. Excuse me. She set us up. Uh, yeah, I believe she did. State Representative Porto. That's the last time she's going to do it. If I win. Hey, Mama! Oh. <laughs> I heard you up there playing cheerleader for me. <laughs> Wasn't he wonderful? <laughs> Proudest moment of my life, Frank. Oh, thank you, Mama. I want to introduce Judge. you. Judge, Callie, may I shake your boy's hand? Yeah. Wonderful so speech. Oh, thank you. you thank remember you so much. Claremont. Yes, my daughter, Martha. How do you do? Uh, how do you how do you just do? passed the bar. The state bar, that is. Well, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. I would be so proud to introduce you to some of my friends. Oh, oh thank you, of course. Excuse me. Excuse me. They make an attractive pair. Your honor is, as usual, perceptive and timely. Police. Probably just had a little car trouble coming out from Austin. But he could have called. I could just die. <laughs> yes? Mama? Randy, where are you? Are you all right? We've been worried sick. Guess what? I got a surprise for you. I'm married. You're what? I'm married, Mama. <laughs> that narrow go, Nuevo Laredo. <laughs> Oh, I love her, Mama. You will, too. Here, Mama. Here. Uh, Mama, hi. This is your new daughter, Sue Lynn Hatcher. I'm here for <laughs> Oh, God. I just love you and Randy and everybody. Oh, I can't wait to see my new Mama. <laughs> Watch a little TV? No. No. Like my new dress, honey? I got it on sale. It was $49.95. It was marked down from $110. Yeah, it's real nice, Sudan. Don't you think maybe it's a little overstated for a politician's wife? A little music wouldn't disturb your concentration, would it, honey? Sheep, little, would you, honey? No, mm -hmm. not sugar. I gotta finish this. I don't know. It's just it's been a long time. I'm sitting all hot and sexy in that blue jeans. Sorry, Suleen. I told you, I'm under a lot of pressure. Can you answer me one question? Hmm. How'd you marry me? What? Honey, I can't cook. I can't write a speech. I can't even buy the right clothes. One thing I used to be able to do good was make men like men. Even that don't even seem to be working anymore. Well, that's working, Sulin. Men sure do like to look at you. You don't. Now, why do I have to look? I won the prize. Come here. Come here. Sugar, I married you because I love you. Okay? Okay. Maybe tomorrow night I'll make us this supper I cut out a Cosmopolitan magazine. Okay? That'd be just fine. Oh, good. No. 
can't tomorrow night. We gotta go to Mama's, remember? I told you John Connolly's coming over. Why don't you just let me know if you'd like to get together just one time between now and legislative adjournment, okay? Where is she? Over yonder, number eight. She's okay. She hit him with a bottle. Claims he got rough. Who was the Been man? Been checked up since last night. You know who he was? Mm -hmm. Some old cowboy. Sue Lynn turned him every way but loose. He ran off in his boots and his long johns. Thank you very much for handling this, and I do not forget a favor. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Get dressed. I'm taking you home. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Mama. I am not your mama. <laughs> mama, I know I did it wrong. Mom, please don't kill Randy. Please. Hurry up. I love it, Mama. I really do. Yes, I can see that. Five years passed. Somehow, some way, Randy and Sue Lynn stayed married. Though all of us knew the difference between public smiles and private pain. I feel like I was grabbing. I mean, I'd like to go to Washington someday. But I'm only in my third term in Austin. Randy, come here, darling. Listen to me for a minute. A plum is about to fall off the tree, and it'd be foolish of you not to catch it. As a congressman, you could you could ally with, with Nader, with John Gardner. Callie. You could build a national power base. Callie. One throne at a time, all right? Let the boy decide for himself. We ran a little private poll. Your recognition factor is 72%. That's downright phenomenal. Besides, ever since Watergate, the country's hungry for attractive politicians with clean shirts. And you're clean, son. Now, that's as clear as a diamond in a hog waller. There ain't no skeletons in the closet, are they? No, sir. The other side will poke you like a germ under a microscope. Senator, my son's life speaks for itself. Just remember what old Sam Rayburn said to the aspiring politician. Never get caught in bed with a dead woman or a live man. <laughs> Tomorrow is a school day, gentlemen. I think we ought to let the candidate. <laughs> And his wife discussed this together. I ran in that. Not What do you think, sugar? You want to drive to Washington, D.C.? Whatever you want, honey. That's just fine with me. Honey, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. Far away. Oh, it's nothing. Wait. Oh, hey, hey. It's not nothing. What is it? Spit it out. Well, I was just thinking about what that man said, you know, about how they check you out and everything. Mm-hmm. That's true, huh? Sure is. That man made you? No, <laughs> up one side and down the other. Why? Well, it was a long time ago, and it probably... So then, what you talking about? Well... I got this problem, see, and I need $5,000 to fix it. $5,000? Fix what? It was way before we got married, sweetheart. I didn't even, I didn't even know you then. district judge and I think the other one's is Baylor. Sweetheart, we just just having a good time and say, aren't you, honey? Honey, can't we just, can't we just pay him and then just forget about it? Good night, Mr. Randy. Miss Sue Lynn. Kidding. 
it's only the beginning. I have to pay the some bitch to go broke and kill him. And don't say that, please. I want some answers. I want some straight answers. Danny, I told you, I was just having a little fun. Fun? My wife and two men in a cheap motel? Randy, what more do you want me to do? I said I was sorry. Oh, damn, I should have known this. I should have known you're just a scandal waiting to happen. You knew I wasn't the sweetheart of Sigma Chi, Randy. You asked me to get married. You seduced me! Well, they better write a new book in the Bible, honey, because that's a certified miracle. You only sleep with me once a year, for which I believe you must get your mama's permission. Ah! You hit me! You are damn right I hit you! I hit your hell of a lot more, too! They all came. When Callie blew her horn, people danced. The barbecue dove hunt hoedown speechifying rally for Randy really wasn't necessary. He didn't need the votes. Callie wanted to show off her boy. And none of us knew that this was the beginning of the end. Janie, let me know just as soon as Vice President Mondale gets here. Oh, I forgot. His office calling. He's not going to be able to come. What? Oh, wait, wait, listen. He sends yeah. his best, and so does Jimmy and Rose. All right, but listen, don't, tell Sam, no, please don't let anybody go off on their own. It does will wait till Randy and I Won't get there. You stop worrying, honey. It's in the bag. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. Dan, he promised he'd give us the negative. Yeah, well, just who in hell is he? I don't know. It's just some post office box. Well, here's a new entry for the candidate's guidebook. Be sure and hold back $25,000 to buy your wife's dirty linen. I don't give a damn about the U.S. Congress. All I want is a husband. Yeah, well, that's just great. You tell me how I'm going to persuade Mama write me a check for $25,000. Oh, are you kidding? Your mom would buy you the Trinity River if you ask for it. Lord Sulin. Your timing is just beautiful, you know that? I got 200 of the most important people in North Texas out there waiting to make contributions to my campaign. Now what am I going to do, wrap up my wife's porno pictures? Daddy, I'm sorry. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Maybe I'll just go away, huh? Now how do I even know there's a blackmailer? Maybe just skimming a little cream off the top for yourself, huh? A little private jelly bean jar? Just don't take it any further, Randy, okay? I'll handle it in some way. I tried to change for you, Randy. You know, everybody's done something they're ashamed of. I love you. I still do, honey. I think maybe the mama was right. I'm just not good enough for you. Hush now. I love you. You're still my little girl. Oh, baby, it's gonna be all right. It's all right. here today. Now, after I'm finished, y'all can go out and shoot every single dove in North Texas if you like. Right now, in the meantime, in the meantime, where's the man of the hour? Randy? Here I am. Oh, hi. Come on up here, honey. <laughs> How about this youngster, huh? Now, listen. 
even if I wasn't his mama, I would vouch for him, and I'd vote for him, and I would be ever so proud. So I'd like y'all to say hello to the next U.S. Congressman for the 24th District. <laughs> to today's show. Thank you. I just threw off anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, sugar. I'll be back in a minute. Give me that old pop gun of yours. I want to get me some doves. <laughs> well, you just be careful now. You hear you keep the safety on. Oh, hell, Randy. I've been shooting pearl beer cans off daddy's fence since I was five. Yeah, I know. You be careful. Okay. Bye. Jeannie, how many carrots is that thing? I don't know. I just told Cartier's to make it knuckle to knuckle. <laughs> Randy! Randy! Come on over here and cool off. You got everybody's boat anyway. Oh, no, ma'am, I can't do that. We've still got an hour of good shooting light left. Me. Sorry. Having any luck? <laughs> Hell, next time I want birds, I'll go buy them at the supermarket. You got a cold beer on you? No. I'm kind of glad we ran into each other, though. I've been wanting to have a little private talk with you. <laughs> Girl talk. <laughs> I know you're very proud of Randy. They say there is no limit to his potential, and I know he's going to go to Washington and turn that town inside out. Yeah. Randy's wonderful, ain't he? I also know that there's been some problems between the two of you. Look, Mama, that's our problem, OK? Of course. But we are both grown women. And it's time we face the fact that a discordant marriage is not attractive politically. Feel the zinger coming on, Mama. Why don't you just hit me with it? All right. I will be entirely candid. I think you and Randy would be much happier apart, divorced, and I will make it more than worth your while. Would you clear this with Randy, boy? I told you it's between you and me. Well, Mama, I don't know a whole lot about politics, but ain't it worse for somebody to be divorced than somebody who's trying to work out marital problems? And besides, you know, you're forgetting one important item. Randy and I love each other very much. Oh, I wish I could believe that. Oh, 
Oh, come on, Mommy. You don't want to believe it. And do you think I'd stay married to that man and his mom if I didn't love him? That's enough. You hate me. You always have. You hate me because I'm married up. I got me a rich one just like you, huh, Mama? You watch your have mouth. Have you done your best Shut to turn a good man mouth. into Mama's boy? I should have known better than to try and deal with a person on your level. Face it, Mama. You want to sleep with him? I got news for you. He ain't that good! No! Get him! Thank you, Miss Bordeaux, and we'll keep you posted. Sorry, Lily. Are you all right? Miss Bordeaux, may I see you a moment, please? Anything about your daughter-in-law's state of mind? I don't know exactly what you mean. Yeah, the way she's been acting lately, her health, something she might have said. She's been a little depressed, I suppose. Depressed? Well, the pressure of a campaign is enough to wear anybody out, and she wasn't particularly fond of politics. She had headaches. With all due respect to you, ma'am, did she have any enemies, uh, someone that might have wanted her dead? No, 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 certainly not. We, we, we are talking about an accident here, aren't we? Probably. Stray shot kind of thing. You know, people fall down, their shotguns go off. You just go on home now, Mrs. Bordeaux. If anything should come to mind, give me a call. Of course. Detective Hart, I'd like you to know how very pleased I am at you that's checking into this matter. See, my police reporters speak very highly of you. Thank you kindly, ma'am. Thank you. Come on, Bubba, it's almost midnight. You read a damn file 18 times. Interesting case. Very interesting case. Hey, you ain't gonna make anything out of some old gal blowing herself away? You ever see such a cast of characters? Papers are all over it. Damn New York Times called me today. Can't make bricks without straw. Stamp it accidental death and let it go at that. Or suicide. Women don't shoot themselves in the face, Tanner. Don't you know that? Yeah, how come? It's true. You ask any coroner. If a gal's gonna check out, she'll aim at her boob. She'd never mess up her face. Assumption is she wants to look her best when she's laid out. I tell you, I wouldn't want the voters to think we're whitewashing a murder just because everybody involved eats high off the hog. Now, the dead wife of an almost United States congressman deserves special handling, don't you think? The Dallas Post-Dispatch will not tolerate it. Mama? Hi. Did you hear the news? The grand jury handed down a murder one indictment on Sue Lynn's death. Murder? 
It's ridiculous. Who? Yours truly, Mom. Your little boy. No. No. Couldn't be. No, they couldn't. They couldn't. Don't you worry about it. Mom will take care of me. Mama will take care of me. Mr. Cosa, why have you come from New York to take this case? Because the distinguished Cali Bordeaux asked me. Hey, is it true that your fee is one million dollars? There cannot be a price on an innocent man's life. What is your defense? The oldest one in the world, innocence. I represent an innocent man who was charged with an accidental death. Well, sir, how long do you think this trial will last? If the judge grants our first motion, about five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I recognize the box office appeal of this matter, but I remind you that no sound of any kind will be tolerated. I will not hesitate to eject anyone, no matter what the pedigree. Mr. Cotham, your motion to dismiss will be overruled. Mr. Ranch. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state of Texas will prove three facts. One, Sue Lynn Hatcher Bordeaux, age 24, was brutally murdered. Objection, Your Honor. Can Mr. Wrench restrain the use of lurid adjectives, particularly since it has not even been proved that a murder was committed? Sustained. Please continue. Number two, that it was committed by her husband, state. Representative Randall Bordeaux III. Number three, that the defendant had both motivation and ability to perpetrate this capital offense. Objection. Did the prosecutor misspeak himself with the use of the word capital offense? No, Your Honor. The state believes this crime fits the categories under the Texas Revised Criminal Code for which the death penalty is appropriate. And we will so prove. Officer Kirk, you have described yourself as a forensic firearms examiner for the Dallas Police Department. And I ask you, if you or uh, me or a young woman inexperienced with shotguns was to drop this weapon, could it discharge? Shoot you in the face. Not very likely. I tested it 30 to 40 times. Under the exact conditions, it did not malfunction. It did not discharge. Well, could some person out there in the field that day, say from about, oh, 20 feet away, have shot Mrs. Bordeaux by mistake? No, sir. Not by the size of the hole in her forehead. Did you or did you not make this sworn statement Mr. Randy told Miss Sue Lynn that this was only the beginning. He'd have to keep paying that son of a bitch or else kill him. End quote. I recollect something like that. That's all, Your Honor. The witness is unable to testify as to who was in the apartment making these melodramatic remarks. It could have been house guests, it could have been burglars. Oh, no, sir. It was Representative Bordeaux. Well, I've heard him speak. I voted for him. Oh, I'm I don't want a... Is it? Jeannie sent you some cookies. I had to give him the guard first, but... Are you all right? I'm confused. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up. It is a bad dream, and it'll be over soon. I promise you that. 
Randy, it's my feeling that the jury must be told the full extent of Sulin's reputation. She didn't on trial. A woman with shadows in her life might attract any number of potential enemies. And I, I had to uh, clean up a mess one night at a motel with Sulin and some cowboy. I, I, I didn't want you to know because... She told me about it. She was mortified. She only did it because I wasn't paying any attention to her. The jury's got to know, Randy. No, they don't. And I won't have it. She's dead. Now you leave her alone. She got us into this, Randall. Did she, Mama? I'm tired. My head hurts. That's a given, Mom. Mrs. Church, where are you employed? The post dispatch. Then it would be correct to say that you are in the pay of Callie Lord Bordeaux. I don't work for the money, if that's what you mean. Callie has been a close friend of mine for the past 30 years. I see. Now, on the day of that mysterious telephone call, you saw Randy come out of the house. Yes, sir. He made sure you saw him. I wouldn't know about that. Randy made sure you saw him walk right by you, didn't he? I saw him, but what he had on his mind, I don't know. Well, if a man were establishing an alibi, he'd make sure you saw him, wouldn't he? Objection. Sustain. After he made sure you saw him, then what'd he do? He went back into the field. He did. Did he say anything? I don't remember. Mrs. Chips, I remind you that you are testifying under oath, subject to the penalties of perjury. I ask you one more time, did he say anything before he went into the field? He said there's another good hour of shooting light left. Well, if he was going to kill somebody, he wouldn't have said that now, would he? Mrs. Bordeaux, we all know what an ordeal this has been. And I appreciate your willingness to testify. Well, I want the truth to come out. The truth? The truth is sometimes slipperier than a greased pig, isn't that so? I've never had any trouble holding on to it. Isn't it the truth, Mrs. Bordeaux, that you were opposed to your son's marriage to Sue Lynn? They eloped. I had nothing to say about it. Isn't it the truth that you thought Sue Lin was a scandal, a millstone around your son's political neck? No. Isn't it the truth that you hated your daughter-in-law? Certainly not. Isn't it the truth that Randy Bordeaux killed his wife in order to please his mom? Oh, that is a lie. That is a lie. That's all. Honor, the defense calls Randall Bordeaux the third. When did you first learn of this blackmail being perpetrated against your wife? Well, that's what we were arguing about the night of July 8th when all those people overheard us. And did you pay the $5,000? Yes. I borrowed it from my mother, but I, I didn't tell her the reason. Why didn't you report this extortion to the police? I don't know. It's... I suppose... Out of love for my wife, not wanting to drag her into headlines. Now, Mr. Bordeaux, may I remind you that you are under oath, subject to the penalties of perjury. Did you kill Sue Lynn Bordeaux? No. Absolutely not. I loved her. As best I could. Thank you. Mr. Bordeaux, just who is this alleged blackmailer? I told you, I don't know his name. Who paid the $5,000? I assume my wife did. She told me so. And then on the morning of the day she was... On the morning of the day she was shot, she told me the blackmailer wanted another $25,000. Another $25,000? Did you pay it? No. Why not? There wasn't any need. 
cause? Because my wife was killed. Your Honor, may we mark this as State Exhibit Number 27? Is this the material you told me about? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Copper, you are aware of this document. Mr. Bordeaux, I show you an insurance policy taken out on your wife, Mrs. Sue Lynn Hatcher Bordeaux, by the Wayfair Insurance Company with a face value of $100,000. I'm aware of that. You took it out on your wife. Yeah, well, it was her idea. We were traveling by plane so much, you know, campaigning. And you are aware that it has a double indemnity clause, paying $200,000 to the beneficiary in the event of the insured's accidental death. No, I was not aware of that. Who's the beneficiary? I am. Well, then had your wife's death been ruled accidental, you would have pocketed a quick and easy 200 grand. Not a small sum for a politician in need of campaign funds. No, I don't need any $200,000. My family has... Go ahead, finish it. Your family has. Your family has. My family has money. Yes, they do. But $200,000 wouldn't hurt if a man a politically ambitious rich man needed a slush fund to pay off an alleged blackmailer, would it? Objection! Oh. The jury will disregard the last question. You know better than that, Mr. Wrench. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It just it, it slipped out. I... Oh, that's all. Come in, come in, please. Thank you for receiving me so late, Miss Rachel. No, no, it's all right. Listen, I'm sorry the place is such a mess. I just haven't had time. Would you sit down right over here? I'm just trying to get a present for my daughter to birthday. Sit down, please, sir. This is not an impulsive act. I wouldn't come and running over here in the middle of the night on a mission of madness. I see it. I want you to know who really killed my daughter-in-law. And who might that be? I did. Randy had nothing to do with it. Well, it doesn't surprise me that you would try anything to save your son. Don't be condescending, Wrench. This is difficult enough to confess. Well, I wouldn't think of it. You make a mighty fine living out of stories. Why don't you print it in the paper? What if I'm telling you the truth? What if you have the wrong person on trial? And what if you what don't? What if jackasses fly? Now, if I thought I was prosecuting the wrong person, I'd resign tomorrow and cut weeds. What can I do to make you believe me? Mrs. Bordeaux, nobody's going to believe you. If what you say is true, then why weren't your fingerprints on the rifle? I was wearing gloves that day. And why were Randy's everywhere? Because it's his rifle. Exactly. It's his rifle, it's his wife, and we know his motivation. And you have none. What? You are another mother trying to save her son. I can appreciate that. But it's late now, and I have been very patient. I have a great many Damn it, Ranch, listen to me. I am not without power. And someday you may need me. <sighs> well, I'll overlook that. Listen, you're talking bribe, and then we might have another case to try. Now, let's say goodnight. Enough lives have already been wasted. Vengeance when the defendant, fine. Randy Bordeaux, Tell telephoned you. Now, well, Randall Bordeaux. Randall Bordeaux decided to play God. He tried Sue Lynn in his own private court, where he was both accuser and prosecutor, judge and jury. And he found her guilty, and he sentenced her to death. And with a shotgun from a distance of less than five feet, he carried that sentence out. Now, I don't want vengeance. 
I don't even want an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. What I want you to do, what I want you to do is something very easy, something very simple. All I want you to do is dispense justice. Justice. Magnificent, majestic, wonderful American justice. Somebody, somebody wrote about it once, about a year or two ago. I'm, I'm going to read you what somebody wrote about it, then, then I'm going to go sit down. I've got it right over here. We're shocked by the blood that spills in our cities. We are stunned by too many verdicts that send violent men back into the streets they stay in. Not only here, not only in the state of Texas, but in the capital of our country. Punishments have been lenient, lax, often nothing at all. Power and influence must not be a reason to deny justice. Unless all men are equal in the eyes of the law, in the courts, in the juries, then our house falls, and darkness will come. The author of these inspiring words, and someone who says it far better than I. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for making my case. Cali Lord Bordeaux. out in the Randy Bordeaux murder trial. Nine men and three women have been deliberating 64 hours. They may be hopeless. They may be hopeless. Turn it off. They have to free him. Oh, honey, they will. There's some justice left in this cracked old world of ours. can't even be on trial. I know, Kelly. I know. Jenny, it's burning a hole in me, and I can't get it out. I tried to talk. Hon, I tried to talk. Hon, to I know. And I'm here. You don't know. I don't know what, Kelly. I never thought it'd go this far. Mr. Bordeaux, would you please rise? We, the jury, find the defendant, Randall Bordeaux III, guilty of the charge of first-degree murder. Your Honor, we demand that the jury be polled. I'll fix you some tea, okay? I'm gonna call Austin again. He never called me back. I'm sorry, Callie. I can't do it. I've searched my soul. 
My prayers are with you and Randy. Mrs. Bordeaux, the president has asked me to extend his respects to you, but uh, there is nothing he can do. It's a matter for the state of Texas. his decision. He won't sign another appeal. It's dragged on long enough. He wants the sentence carried out. Oh, no. Yes. We can delay this indefinitely. Yes. And that's just what Randy doesn't want. He's quite a man, you know that? It takes a whole lot more courage to die than just go on living on the installment plan. I'm going to. Kelly. What? You asked me to tell you, don't. What? He said, don't. <laughs> I'll be downstairs. There have been 361 executions in Texas since 1924. Electric chairs are no longer used. 5 p.m. on the day before the execution, the prisoner is served the last meal of his choice. He then showers and dresses in the clothes he'll be buried in. Assistant warden reads court order requiring execution before sunrise. The prisoner is taken to a hospital room where a certified medical doctor will insert an intravenous tube enough sodium pentothal is dripped into the tube to cause instantaneous death. I wish I hadn't come. Oh, no. I had to know. Are you all right? Oh, I'm just fine. Except they took my guitar away. Afraid I might hang myself with a string. Sit down, Mama. Sit down. Listen to me. Cotham is in Washington. He seems to think that Wizard White might grant us a stay. There's a thousand things we can do. I'll pass. I'm ready today. I might not be 60 days from now. Please. We haven't begun to exhaust the possibilities. The best I could hope for would be commutation to life. You look around. I think I'd rather take my chances on the other side. I've always tried to do what I thought was best for you. Mama, I know that. I know that, and I cheer up. The world knows I walked by. I had a good run. Irony is, a lot of people I'd like to kill. And I'm getting popped off for someone I didn't. Someone I loved. I can't let this happen without telling you something. Hush. I know. I know. You know what? I, I do know, Mama. I guess I've always known. What? Oh, my God. No. Do you hate me? It's too late for that. It's liberation day for both of us. Forgive me. Forgive me. Please. Of course, of course, of course I do. Of course I do. Love me. <laughs> Mom. 
Mom. I love you. I have always loved you. Oh, Sure y'all can handle him from here. Oh, I hope so. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, you folks have a happy life. I hope we will, thank you. Yeah, he's all yours. Fine boy. 100% perfect. watched Callie and son drive away. When the limo was just a little black ant speck, Jeannie whispered, maybe she'll do better this time. And I said, we'll see, hon. We'll see. <laughs> 